Tracy, Justin? Yes. We have three minutes until we start and have 34 people um, in the waiting room. Three minutes, 34 people in the waiting room. Justin, I got your secret ingredient. Hey, what's, uh, what's, I can't see it. What is it? Basco. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Jessica, what's the meeting ID number? Give me a second. Okay, it is 924. Nine two. Whoops. Nine two four. Six four. Nine three. Okay. Zero five one seven. Well, is there a password? Yeah, KJ Culinary. Capitals or anything? Yeah, all capital. Um, just trying to do on tiny video. Do you have your ice bath ready? There's no ice bath ready. Where is it? This is plugged in. Okay, let me know when you guys are ready. We have 55 in the waiting room. You want to grab a glass? Because we're going to say that you're here too. We're going to say that you exist. We're already here. <laughs> We just have to lock them in the house and tell them to lock them in the house. I'm going to have them off because they can't hear each other. They can't hear each other. Okay, guys, we're about to be on. Okay, come and see that, Erica. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna, going to start letting people in. We have 61 in the race. So, you guys ready? Yep. Okay. Trace? Yeah. All right, oh, here we go. 64 bad. coming in. Oh, Jessica, let me know when everybody's in. There we go. Everybody's in. You can get started. Yeah. Can you hear us? There we go. Hello. I think we got, I think everybody's been let in. Hi, welcome to those of you that are joining us from previous. They welcome to new people joining us. Let me just get a couple housekeeping things out of the way. I'd like to remind everybody to make sure they're on mute. If you're not on mute, it becomes very echoey for everybody. So if you can go ahead and make sure that you're on mute. There may be an opportunity at some point where we say, hey, unmute if you want to say something, but um, definitely use the comments section. This is a big one. If you have any questions or any comments, go ahead and type them directly into the comments section and we will be sure to address them um, as soon as you know, as soon as possible. So that way, you guys can hear all the all the things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm Tracy. For those of you that are new, I'm one of the chefs here at Kendall Jackson. Uh, Paul's going to be jumping in doing some cooking today. Justin is joining us. He's on a different screen. He's in Florida right now. So um, Robert's over here drinking some wine. We got the team all with us today. So thank you again for joining us. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Right, so it's important to start off with a cheer. So everybody, hope you have your glasses of wine poured. <laughs> mm. So really quick, I'd like to tell you today we're drinking the Santa Maria Valley Camelot Highlands Chardonnay. This is out of Santa Barbara County. And we're all drinking Chardonnay today, not only because it's delicious and we love it, but because today we're gonna to be talking about all about Dungeness crabs. And crabs and Chardonnay, that is the way to go. 
So um, we're really, really excited because it's Dungeness crab season here in Northern California. And that is something that we are known for in the Bay Area is our Dungeness crabs. And we had a bit of a late start to the season. So, um, so really the, the fishermen have only been able to be out fishing the crabs for about two weeks now. And oftentimes they're able to do it more in December. So we are so, so excited to be able to talk about crabs today and that we're able to get beautiful Dungeness crabs this year. Um, so we're just, we wanna talk all about crabs today. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump in Paul's going to talk to you a little bit more about Dungeness crabs, and then he's going to show you how we cook a whole crab. Um, and when we're going to jump back and forth a little bit, I'm going to make a Dungeness crab and cauliflower soup. Paul's going to make some crab cakes. Uh, we're going to make crab stock. We're going to basically show you how to deal with your crab from start to finish and use all parts of that crab, not just the delicious sweet crab meat, but also the shells where there's a tremendous amount of flavor. So again, cheers to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to remind you one more time, any questions you have, please don't wait till the end. Go ahead and just put those questions right in the comment box at any time. And if I don't catch it, Jessica will, um, Jessica will jump in and, um, and let you know what the questions are about. Now, before I pass off uh, the, the screen to Paul, I wanna let those of you know that are local here in Sonoma County um, and wine club members, we are very much known for our crab feed that we've done in the past in January. It's one of our biggest events. It's a really fun, you know, really great event. And unfortunately, because of COVID, we're not able to host people here at the estate right now, but we thought, well, we don't wanna skip this event. So we are gonna be doing this event in a virtual way. So if you're local, Sonoma County, even Marin or San Francisco County, we're gonna be doing a pickup. So it's on February 6th, we're gonna be doing a crab to go for two. You can pick up on Friday the 5th or Saturday the 6th. It's $140 for two people. And that includes the whole meal. It does not include wine, but we've got some really great Chardonnay packs for you to, um, to pick out as well. And then we're gonna be doing a Zoom on that Saturday evening at 5 30. We're going to be doing a live Zoom, again, talking about crabs. We're going to have Randy, our, uh, our winemaker, on talking about the Chardonnays. We're going to have Bob Costarello, who is our seafood purveyor out of San Francisco. He's going to be on talking about crabs. So we're going to bring the event to you guys in your homes. We do not want to skip this event. We have so much fun. So definitely, if you're interested, check out our website. It's going to be a really great time. So on that note, I'm going to introduce you, guys, introduce you all to Chef Paul and let him get talking about crabs. All right, hello everybody. Um, we got some Dungeness crab here. Um, we've been doing this event here quite quite so often. I've uh, been cooking the crab um, through this method for quite some time. Um, it's quite simple, easy for anybody to do at home. Um, we got here our local Dungeness crab that we got in today. Um, here it is right here. Just a nice Dungeness crab. You got the nice purple backs on them. Um, they get, you know, anywhere from uh, two, two to three pounds each. Um, we cook these very simple. Uh, follow, if you follow that recipe there, it's uh, eight quarts of water with uh, some salts. And we use vinegar that helps uh, pull that meat away from the uh, shell and, and very easy to uh, pick. So um, in a pot back here, I have some water. I'm just going to drop that crab in the pot. And then right away, I set my timer for 13 minutes, which I got over here. And then uh, that's that. Um, and then uh, when it comes out, I'm just gonna go right on a sheet tray, not into a water bath and let it kind of rest there for a second. Um, but um, a, couple, uh, a couple of fun facts that I found about Dungeness crab. Um, a female crab can carry up to uh, 2.5 million crab eggs on her back. Okay, just imagine 2.5 million crabs for one crab. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, huh? Um, uh, the, the crab meat is a high quality uh, protein, uh, very low in um, calories and um, very uh, essential amino acids. I'll interject again, which means that it fits into your January uh, healthy yep. eating. Very healthy for you. Um, it also has a... Um, a supply of important minerals. It's got uh, zinc, copper, calcium, magnesium, and iron, uh, which I definitely like to eat healthy, especially this time of year. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to let that crab cook, and I'm going to have Tracy come back, and she's going to start uh, talking about the soup. Hey. Question, are there any tips for cleaning them beforehand with some salt? Uh, 
clean them before, like before you cook them? Yes. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, they're coming straight out of the salt water unless you find a lot of dirt, but it's going straight into that nice uh, salt water and it's going to be cleaned afterwards. Great. And how long does the crab cook for? Uh, that's about 12 to 13 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, can you grab that pulse so I have some space? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Me again. All right. So while Paul's uh, crab is cooking, I wanted to get the soup going because it's going to take a little bit of time. Now, one of the best parts about this soup is that we're using the shells. So later on in a little bit, Paul's going to show you all how to clean this whole crab. You're going to end up with this delicious, sweet crab meat. Half of it, you're probably just going to eat as you're picking it. And then he's going to take some and make crab cakes, but then you're going to be left with these crab shells. And the shells have a tremendous amount of flavor. Really in any shellfish, when you think of things like crabs, shrimp, a tremendous amount of flavor is in those shells. And so don't just throw them away, use them to make stock. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I've got, my, I've got a pot here going that I'm going to just start sweating some, um, some onions and garlic in. Now, when I made my crab stock, I've got that simmering back here. My crab stock has been really simple. Um, you know, it's, it's aromatics, onion, bay leaf, celery, but the most important part when making something like a crab stock is that you want to roast the shells because what that does is it develops the flavor of the shell. So it gives it this nice roasty, toasty, real sweet flavor, which is, um, which is delicious with the crab stock. It really enhances that flavor of the crab stock. And you will be surprised how fast it happens. Crab stock doesn't need to simmer for all that long, probably about an hour. And then all of a sudden you'll see that you're, when you start making something like this in your kitchen, It'll become really fragrant, really fast. And what you're smelling is that beautiful smell is what's gonna be um, concentrated in the flavor of your stock as well. So I've got my onions starting to sweat here a little bit. Let me add a little bit of salt to them. So, so crab and cauliflower, I mean, again, we're talking about Chardonnay, which is really just a wonderful pairing with crab, but cauliflower is as well. Cauliflower has that kind of natural decadent creaminess, lusciousness. So it's really great with crab because although we are gonna put a tad bit of cream in this soup, you don't have to add quite as much cream because of the cauliflower. Because if any of you've ever made like cauliflower mashed potatoes, it has that same kind of lusciousness um, that a potato would have and that same decadence on the palate with a beautiful sweet flavor. So I've got my onion caramelizing. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic as well. I'm actually not really, I'm not looking to get any color on my onions. I'm just letting them cook a little bit so they're sweet and soft. But another really beautiful thing about this soup is that, you know, we've got white onions, white cauliflower. The crab stock has a little bit of a hue to it, but for the most part, it's a pretty neutral flavor. So the soup is gonna end up being a very beautiful kind of clean color. So we wanna make sure that the onions don't have, if the onions get too caramelized, it's gonna end up discoloring the soup a little bit. It's still gonna taste delicious, but, um, you know, if you want to kind of, you know, fancy this up for somebody, having that really clean look is nice. Now, while my onions are caramelizing, I want to talk to you about my cauliflower. So I've got cauliflower here that I've sliced. Um, but before I sliced the cauliflower, I saved myself some really nice florets. The florets being kind of, you know, if you, if I put these pieces all together, right, these three pieces, you have like a floret. Um, and what I did was I cut them down so they're these nice, small, little dainty florets, and I just blanched them in salted water. And I'm gonna save those till later. That's gonna be part of my garnish because as decadent as the soup is, to add this element of different textures, we're gonna use some fresh crab meat at the end, but also having those nice kind of cauliflower for florets. Not only is it really beautiful looking, but it's gonna add another little element of texture. Now my cauliflower that I cut for my soup you can all see I cut them, they're maybe a half inch sliced. And I cut them in a uniform size so they cook evenly, but the smaller you cut them, the faster the soup cooks. So my onions, mm, they're smelling really good. They're nice and fragrant. Um, so let's see. So I've got that going. I'm going to have um, that go another couple seconds and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my cauliflower. Paul, would you like training the crab stock for me? I have a setup right here. So I add my cauliflower in there and just give it a nice stir. I'm going to add salt again. Seasoning at every step is really important when you're making something like a soup. 
because this soup will be done in about in less than an hour. It comes together really quick. So you're really counting on, and there are quite honestly not that many ingredients in this soup. There's not a ton of different ingredients. And so you really want with each step to season. So each of those steps and flavors are developed in the right way. If we wait until just the end of season with salt, it's gonna be a much more of a surface flavor as opposed to an all throughout flavor. So hold on one sec. I'm gonna have you finish that right here. I want you guys to see this because Paul's going to pour it towards you and you can see all the beautifulness of that stock. All right, so let's see if I get in here. Like, where is it? Both of them, right here and right there. All right. so, mm. okay, so here I am. Um, I roasted off the, uh, the shells earlier today. We had to start the stock, but it's got your basic miracle on there some white wine, some water, bay leaf, and thyme. And we're just straining that. And I'll show you uh, how to clean that a little later. And there you go. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So here's my smell of vision again, every time. But it's, it's beautiful. It's sweet smelling. It smells like crab. It, where's my spoon? It's going to taste just like crab too, but it's, mm. It's delicious. And this is really only going for what? Maybe about an hour. No, it's about 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it was it was about 30 minutes. So it really does not take much time. And this is from an ingredient that most people would have just thrown away after you've cleaned the crab. So I can't I've had a lid on my um, my cauliflower and my onions. I put a lid on top of it while it's sitting here slowly sweating. Now what the lid does while that's cooking, not only it creates steam, right? So it's helping the cauliflower to soften a little bit faster. But what the lid also does is it helps to prevent all of those things from browning because it's creating moisture within your pot. So um, if, if I didn't have this lid, I'd have to be watching over it a little bit closer and be stirring to make sure that my cauliflower and my onions don't caramelize. But because I put that lid on and that steam is created, it's like I said, doing two things. It's helping them to cook a little bit faster, but it's also stopping them from browning, which like I said, I'm not really dying for in this recipe. So I'm just gonna give it one more stir here. Smelling really good. Looking really good. Tracy, we okay. have a question on how do we keep the crab stored before throwing it on the boiling pot? How do you keep the crab stored before? Oh, this is a great question. Um, you want to store crab on ice. I mean, in a perfect world, you go to your fish market, you buy the live crab, you bring it home, you cook it that same day. Um, and so, but you definitely, you want it to stay as cold as possible. So on ice is great, you know, in your refrigerator on ice, you want it to be that to, you know, make sure it's as fresh as possible. Yeah, good question. I can't All right. but I'm here. What's that? Was that another question, Jessica? No, not sure who that was. I'm trying to figure out who I need to mute. No worries. All right, so- oh, We do have one more question, sorry. Um, you use frozen crab for this? And you use frozen crab for this. Okay, I'm gonna sound like a crab snob, but yeah, I mean, if that's all you can get your hands on, then yes, of course. Like we don't want you to miss out on this if just because you can't get your hands on fresh crab. Um, so yeah, you can, but honestly, there's, no, there's gonna be nothing that beats fresh, Dungeness crab or fresh crab. It's just the truth. There's something, and when you taste it side by side, what often happens with crab that's been frozen is that, that it, it definitely has a different texture. It'll be wa more watery in texture and flavor, but it just doesn't have that same kind of delicate, um, you know, that delicateness on the palate. But again, with, with soup, it might not be as big of a deal. Um, we are going to put some fresh crab meat in the soup at the end because we have it and it's really a really nice part of the recipe. So I guess in that sense, it wouldn't be quite as um, big of a deal, but I think that if you put it, crab's one of those things that I think if you put them side by side, fresh crab meat and frozen crab meat, most people will be able to taste the difference. Yeah. All right, so now this has been cooking for a little while. My cauliflower is soft. I'm gonna go ahead and add my um, fennel seed and my herbs. And then I'm gonna add um the cream and some of my stock and then i'm just going to let this simmer for a little bit longer and paul's going to pop back in and show you all how to clean that crab and make some crab cakes so i'm adding enough stock 
to just cover, barely cover the cauliflower. I'm kind of, I'm not completely submerged because my cauliflower is still cooking. So um, as it cooks, it's going to, you know, continue to almost disintegrate, get kind of mushy. And then I saw some crab stock left over. I can use this after I'm blending the soup. If I need to, if I want it to be a little thinner, I can use that crab stock to thin the soup later. And then I can also freeze this crab stock to either make soup at a later date or um, maybe, you know, make a sauce out of it. This is delicious to use in risotto. If you ever want to make a crab risotto, this is, stock is amazing in crab risotto as well. So I'm going to hop off to the side and let Paul jump back in and talk more about crab. Hey, Paul. Paul, a, I have a question, Tracy. Sure. Um, I, I don't know if this is true, Paul, but I've heard if you look the crabs in the eye before you drop them in the water, you have nightmares. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> no. no. So, you, uh -huh. so you, always, you always put them away. <laughs> you always put the crabs in facing away from you. So that's very, very important. Otherwise, you have crabs in your nightmare. So be careful, Paul. And lay them away from you too, uh, so the water doesn't splash in your eye. Um, hey, I have well, one more question. What's what's the cost per pound? Where do they end up for the crab? Man, this year? I think they were going back and forth. I don't know if it's the delivery thing. It's definitely uh, gone up on price. Uh, we're in the $10 range at the moment. Um, I'm sure they're going to be going down here shortly. But uh, I do have another fun fact for you about the crab. 25% um, of our Dungeness crab is, um, is going to be meat. Uh, so making uh, the Dungeness crab the meatiest crab uh, versus a percentage of shell. Um, so here we have a, um, our Dungeness crab that I pulled out of the water. Um, That's our timer. That's our timer. You want me to get that? No, it's good. Oh, you are? I got it. You got it. So um, basically, um, I let this sit for, I let it cool off and on a tray. Um, if you really need to, you can shock it in ice water, but it just, it just naturally cools. It's nice. Um, what you want to do is um, grab it from the back side. And then it kind of just pops out and then it pops off and that's your lid. Um, and then if you take your whole body and you kind of just hold it up to yourself and then go back, you're going to snap it right in half. Now, um, I have a little bit of the water here. Um, and then you want to really, uh, really, and most importantly, you want to take these gills out of here. Um, these are, um, you want to uh, discard those. Those are not going to be edible. They're there's this filtration system where um, you just don't want to have those in, in your food. So um, you want to take those off. Some people like to eat the tamale, which is that, but we're not going to use that either. You know what I've heard people use the tamale for before, Paul? Is, um, I worked at a restaurant where we use the tamale for a salad, in a salad dressing. Oh, a salad dressing. Yeah, yes. and it was really, it kind of, you use it and it looks kind of, they call it mustard, right? Almost too, like, yeah. Because it looks that same color, but just a small amount of that has a ton of flavor. I remember looking at the recipe and thinking, oh, this kind of sounds disgusting, but it was crazy how delicious it was. So after taking those gills off, you can see them on the side there. Uh, let's see. Let me see over here. Let's see if I get in there. Um, you got the gills right there. You want to make sure that all those are clean off. Uh, this crab is pretty clean. Um, you want to take all those off. You're going to discard that. You're not going to save any of that for your stock or nothing. Uh, and then what I do is I just take the tail and then the head piece off. And then I'm going to rinse it a little bit in some uh, ice water. And then you should have some nice clean crab meat. Uh, you can either, uh, you can save these like this. Uh, and then you can either eat them like this, serve them like that, or you can even roast them with some garlic butter is fun. Sometimes like people like them hot is fun, but not too hot. You got to get your hands in there. So um, at this point, what I'm going to do is we're going to be cleaning them for our crab cakes. So, oh yeah. And then also the very top, which is going to be flavorful. There's going to be a little bit of stuff in there. You want to make sure you get that, that head off of there and then all that gunk inside and just give that a little bit of a rinse. Just get your hands dirty a little bit. Hey, Paul, do you know how much um, that crab you're cooking weighs? Uh, this one, it was a little bit of a small crab, probably about uh, close to two pounds, maybe um, a pound and uh, 1.75 or so. Um, so you're looking at, you know, 
you can do the math. Crab right now is almost ten or a little over ten dollars a pound that we paid for this to be delivered to us live. So, um, and then I'm sure you can find them in your supermarkets for about you know I heard they're about seven dollars right now. Um, they were I think that they, last week they were seven bucks for us too. But I honestly think what happened was that like I said earlier because the season didn't start. The, it, we had a, a well, people just like it was a mad rush. I heard there were lines places for it. So I think that what happened was there was such a high demand that the price went up. I want to tell you really quick. I also talked to our seafood purveyor the other day, and he said the average size of a Dungeness crab, they, they really, at least when they fish them, if they, it's it's never more than two pounds. He said it's yeah. usually the average is one and a half to two pounds. Yeah, and then they can get up to three pounds, and they can also live to um, eight to thirteen years old. Um, so um, here we got our shells. We're gonna save the shells, and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be cleaning this crab. So um, I'm just gonna break it like this, break it off the legs. Then I got a cracker right here. I'm just using a regular nut cracker. Um, I'm gonna move the cracker away so you guys are good view there. Let's okay. see, just a regular uh, cracker like this. Um, and then put, some people like to have like a little uh, poker knife to kind of scrape out the meat. Um, I just like to use the claw. So I'll take this little guy right here, one of the sharp end of the claws, because it's always there for you and it's, and it's easy to use. Um, so basically you just kind of get a nice little clean guy here. I'm gonna take this up here. Have a clean bowl for your uh, clean crab meat. So with the body meat, I'll just take that sharp claw and just kind of pull that meat off of there, like so. And then that's from the body part. And then I'm gonna go into the, the larger part and just crack it, but not not cracking it so uh, um, So just a barely a nice small crack, you can see that. You're not really busting it up, just a lightly, so you're still gonna kind of break that off and then and you see that nice little lump meat right in there so once you get that off i'll use that little tip just like a nice little claw and just kind of scrape that right into the bowl okay so i'm not going to sit here and clean all the crab for you um because i already i already cleaned some crab which i have for you i'm going to switch gears in here switching a little bit of a gears um, so I got a couple crab, a uh, couple cups of crab meat here. This is a mise en place. This is having all the ingredients for the crab cakes. Uh, this is one of uh, Kendall Jackson's recipe. Um, we have uh, some uh, minced uh, red bell pepper, some minced red onion. That's a quarter of a cup, and then uh, some celery. A little bit of Italian uh, chopped parsley, a little mayonnaise, and some egg. So once you got all that, it's real simple. So there's one, and then we got some Japanese panko here as well. And so you can use a regular breadcrumb, but we uh, prefer, to, prefer to use this one. It's a nice mild and it's already ready to use. Um, you can find it in any of your grocery stores. Um, let's see here. So most importantly with the crab cakes is not to overmix your crab. So you want that nice lump. So we're gonna start with all the wet ingredients. So I added some egg, a little, the, the mayo, and then you got all your, uh, your veggie in there, right? Super simple recipe. Hey, Paul, can you hear us? We lost your sound. Hey, can you hear me then? I can talk for a little while. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Cool. 
Um, how's it going? So I'm actually here in Florida, uh, and I'm going to be back in California soon, but um, I wanted to hang out in the Zoom tonight, and I'm uh, at a friend's house. I know it looks like it's my kitchen, but it's actually not. Um, so I'm here in Florida, and usually when I get to stay with people, they uh, appreciate when I cook dinner. So I went and grabbed some local crab so I could join in. So this is what they eat in Florida. So these are uh, stone crabs. And uh, there's some famous restaurants in Miami, Joe's Stone Crab. But um, it's, it's a really good crab, very different than Dungeness. Actually, what they do is they catch the crab, rip the claws off, both claws, and throw it back in the water. And then um, the crab regrows the claws so they can continue to be sustainable. So um, different texture, different flavor, very, very popular in Florida amazing with Chardonnay. And um, as far as how you prepare it, usually they, they get boiled. I think they get, get boiled and frozen on the boats. Um, and then you just buy them pre-cooked. But you okay, can, uh, turn, it, turn it back to the other guy. Okay. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. I guess we're switching it up again. <laughs> All right. or, or maybe put back to Justin okay. and see if he has anything more to cover. Or, or do you guys want to, uh, Justin, did you want to go over a few more things or you want me to finish? Yeah, go, go ahead. I'm fine. I'll wait. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. All right. So, um, so like I said, I just got all the ingredients except for the crab, um, and I just kind of make sure that's mixed. I did pre-mix my egg before I added it, so it's nice and even. Even. Um, you got a nice little base going on here. Uh, you can take a look. Um, that's a nice base. So you can stir this as much as you want. You just don't want to over stir once the crab is in there. So that's the that's the thing. You're just gonna fold it in at the last minute. So once you got that kind of mixed together, I'm going to add the panko, the Japanese breadcrumb. You can find at any kind of market now these days. Um, once you got that kind of going, we're going to add the crab. Paul, well, how many crabs do you need to get two cups of crab meat? Uh, depending on the size of the crab, uh, but um, two cups of crab meat to be safe. Um, I would definitely say uh, two crabs. Um, you probably have some left over for sure. But um, uh, you, this is for um, this is for about 28 ounces um, of crab uh, or 28 one ounce crab cakes or larger cakes. So that's pretty much it. Okay. I need to step all the way. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm hopping in a sec. So Paul's got this delicious base forming or coming together. And like he said, you can make your crab cakes any size that you like. Um, when we do hors d'oeuvre parties, we'll make a mini almost like two biters, or you can make them, you know, larger for a meal. Um, it's completely your own prerogative and your own preference. So, um, you know, you, you mix this all together and then you form your cake. So let me grab a pair of gloves really quick. I'm back. Okay, wait, all back. Paul, do you have any tips for having them not fall apart when you fry them? Um, just don't mess with them. Let them, uh, let them uh, cook. And um, that's pretty much it. You want to make sure that, you know, sometimes, you know, Sometimes it is lumpy, but maybe, um, you know, with this amount of, with this recipe, you should have enough binder in it. So you got your egg, your mayonnaise, and your breadcrumbs, which is going to create a, a, a bond. So it just stay together. Uh, but, you know, maybe, you, you know, you're packing your crab cakes and then uh, just put them gently in the pan and not try to mess with them too much. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, Tracy uh, took off for a minute, but um I'm going to start a little pan and I'll show you guys how to cook those. All right, 
So with that, a little clarified butter, you can use uh, ghee or clarified butter. And if you don't have that, you can use a little bit of um, oil, olive oil or rice oil is fine. We made enough, uh, you know, it's a pretty good batch. I mean, this is gonna, like I said, it's gonna be about 28 crab cakes or it can be some larger ones, but um, this is a good amount, as you can see. I'll show you here. That's a good amount of crab, crab cake, so. So we reserved a little bit of the, um, the panko. So we're gonna do about an ounce size which is like so, that's about an ounce size. And then we're gonna drop it in the panko. We have a little bit of reserved panko and go do both sides. And then we're gonna build a couple of those. I mean, you would build them all. And this is something that you can actually, once you make them, you can, uh, you can actually freeze them for an appetizer party, which is great. Uh, I would go ahead and panko them and then put them on a sprayed uh, sheet spray with parchment paper so they don't stick. But um, pretty simple, real easy, uh, really easy recipe. Hey, Paul, I got a couple questions for you that I just read. Um, yeah. One, uh, why do you use clarified butter or ghee as opposed to whole butter? Um, there's a lot of milk fats in uh, butter, so if we clarify it, it has a, um, a higher burning point, so you can, it allows it to um, get a nice uh, crispy brown color on the crab, and that's what we're looking for is flavor and uh, color. And then the other question was, is uh, are big crabs more tender, or are small crabs more tender than big crabs? Um, for Dungeness crab, um, I, th I think um, I like the lumptuous meat, uh, so I'm gonna have to say a larger crab, but I, you know, I, I'd have to compare, uh, um, you know, I don't know actually the age on the, on the larger crabs, but um, depending on the season, I think um, you wanna go for a medium size or, you know, but it's, you know, it's nice to get a lot of good meat too. So all crabs are different depending on where they're coming from or uh, what, what, what the season's like. You just gotta taste it and figure it out. I mean, sometimes one will be sweeter than the other uh, a different day from the same area. So you never know. Um, I got another question that said, how long ahead can you make the crab cakes and bread them? Um, so if you, like I said, if you pre-make these and you put them in the freezer, they'll probably last, um, I don't know, I would, you know, use them within a month or so. Um, but if you were to make them and leave them in your refrigerator, you might have to re-panko them. Uh, some of that panko will probably uh, get soggy, um, but I wouldn't uh, leave them in your fridge for more than a day. And I don't know if you said this already, but, but like when we freeze them, we freeze them in a little bit of extra panko too, so Correct. they don't stick together. Correct. And then on a sheet tray with a, on a parchment paper and spray so they don't stick. So I go ahead, I went ahead and uh, made a few cakes here for you guys. I just got like a, um, I'm gonna say like a medium heat, uh, not too hot. You're gonna burn that, that uh, panko. So probably, you know, a medium heat. You're just going to add those in there and, and just let them do their thing. You know, the crab's already cooked, so just let them, let them sit there. Make sure you got enough butter in there. I mean, the goal, right? The goal at this point is really crisping up the outside of the cake and heating, heating it through. You're not necessarily cooking. So anything. you can see how much uh, butter I got on the pan, almost to coat the bottom of the pan. Uh, you're almost, uh, I wouldn't say pan frying, but a little less than that. So, but it's a nice clear, uh, clarified butter. So, um, go ahead and let it do its thing and just, you know, you don't want to rush a thing of beauty. And, uh, that's pretty much it there. And then, okay, Paul, I got another question. 
If you freeze okay. them, if you freeze them, should you defrost them before you cook them? Um, absolutely. Uh, and then coat them with a little more panko. So let them defrost and then add some fresh panko and then cook them. Absolutely. Cool. But definitely preform them, get them all in there and put them on a sheet tray and uh, wrap them really well with plastic. Go ahead. Yes. Hello, can I ask yes. you a question? Can we get the recipe on your side? Uh, it's on our uh, website. Yeah, Jessica, will you put the link up for the recipe, please? Yes, I'll add the link on the chat. So you really don't want to move them too much. You just want to flip them over and then let the other side brown and then they're pretty much done. So you want a nice golden brown. If, if they are uh, starting to break apart, that probably means that you have too much dry components. You might need a little more moisture, maybe a little bit of a mayo or uh, maybe a little more egg. Um, that will help them bind together. Um, probably because they're too dry and they're falling apart. Uh, that, that can happen, but but if you, uh, if you have the right texture, you should be fine. Hey, Paul, you know, I, um, Paul I'm reading yeah. some of the comments. And uh, one person said when they've been short on crab meat, they add uh, scallops or prawns and make it a seafood cake and say delicious. And then we have somebody who lives in Virginia and they want to order from Seattle's Pike Place Market. Will the crab be fresh enough to make it worth my while? I'm a Seattle native doing drooling as you prep. But yeah, I think, uh, I think you can actually get, you know, just like you would get lobster, you can get a uh, live Dungeness crab shipped overnight and cook them the next day. Yeah, and uh, with the seafood, that's a great idea. I love uh, adding that kind of stuff. Um, uh, seafood cakes are great. Just don't over mix it, like I said. Same with any of your cakes. You want to you want to keep keep that nice lumpiness uh, to the textures for your cake. Um, sometimes you can uh, use a fish or something to make it as a binder. You make it smooth like a puree and use that as one of the binders. And then, but fold in some of your crab meat. Fold in some of your scallop. You don't want it to be all um, uh, you know pureed. So that's so, pretty uh, much all. Yeah, uh, we got to give uh, credit where credit is due. This is actually celebrity chef Josh Silver's crab cake recipe that he taught oh. me. To work with. So if anybody's yes. been to Syrah or Jackson's and had the crab cakes there, that's Josh's recipe that he gave me. So it's a it's a really great recipe. And obviously, the more crab, the better and not overworking it um, is is the key to keeping it really yeah. nice and flaky. And it's super, super easy, and it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves crab cakes. Um, you can't go wrong, and you can always have them in your freezer to pull out. Um, and we're happy to be working with it now. So that's all it took. So they're all done. If you want to take a look on the, uh, the color there, um, that's pretty much it, OK? Uh, that nice little crust on there, that's nice and crispy. That, but once you get to the, the center of the cake, it's going to be nice and tender. So you got some nice textures going on there. And then we got our crab cakes there. So. Can you show me because I can. That's yeah, and then I'll do that for a bit. All right. Hey, Paul. Right. Yes, sir. What's, uh, what's your favorite sauce to put on a crab cake if you're drinking Chardonnay? Man, with the Chardonnay, uh, depending on the Chardonnays, but um, with the, this Camelot here, we're gonna have to go with a nice uh, Lemon aioli, uh, which I can whip up real quick for you guys. Yeah, we got um, um, really you. I have all the ingredients here. What about Tracy? Tracy, what's your favorite sauce for crab cakes? I, I, I'm in the same boat as Paul. I like a good mayonnaise sauce, although just plain old butter is really good. Yeah, it's like, like a lemon garlic, garlic butter. butter. It's really good, but I like a good, like a really lemony aioli. I think it's really nice. Or a remoulade sauce is good. Yeah, a little bit of capers. Heat, a little kick to it. Yep, tartar sauce is always good. Uh, what about so, uh, hollandaise or bernays? Yeah, absolutely. You can sure, put your crab cake on your Benedict's. Might as well <laughs> do a crab cake Benedict. Put some uh, yeah, put a whole for breakfast. 
I mean, I really love a good crab cake sandwich with a little arugula. Oh, yeah. Aioli, nice little soft like roll. Carbs on carbs. So, um, a pretty uh, basic uh, for aioli. Uh, we got our meat some cloth here. We got uh, a cup of oil. So, I got half uh, neutral oil, which we're using the rice oil. And then um, uh, extra virgin oil from our estate. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to. Yep. Take a little sip. I, my throat was getting a little dry. Sorry. You're doing all the work today. Yeah. All right. So, basic ratio: we got a cup of oil to one egg yolk. Um, you always want to start everything except for your oil. So, we got um, an egg yolk. We got a little Dijon. You could add a little garlic if you want. Um, not going through here. A little bit of salt. You can always add more salt. Um, one of my favorite ingredients is Meyer lemons. Uh, we got these all over the place right now. Uh, we're going to do the zest. So I'm going to add. Uh, yes, sir. Have uh, Have you been finding any mushrooms out there in Sonoma County with all this oh, rain you guys had? So many mushrooms and so much fun right now. I try to get out there as much as I can. Um, uh, I've been getting porcinis, um, uh, matsutakis. Um, I get, I've been getting all the, uh, the trifecta on the porcinis, the queen bolites, the king bolites, and um, been de dehydrating them all. Uh, it's been a lot of fun out there. It's a, it's a good workout as well. So um, we're gonna add the lemon juice in there. No seeds. And then just mix that together. And then you're gonna multiply. I'm, I'm gonna just do this by hand, but you just wanna whisk and just slowly add your oil. Just kind of drip it in there. A nice whisk. Paul, it's uh, it's nice to watch you do that when you have a blender sitting right in front of you. Yeah, but some people don't have a blender like this. So you can see how it's coming together. It's real easy. It took me less than a minute to make. I'm gonna add the other oil. Good workout. You don't want to add it too fast because then it'll break. It's really important that you're slowly adding it. And if you see it getting a little thick, uh, feel free to add just a splash of a add a splash of water, um, just a little bit of water, and it kind of it'll loosen that up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. And then uh, you just want to taste it for salt. And at this point, you got a base that's basically like mayonnaise that we use. Uh, the nice extra virgin olive oil and the base, um, our rice oil, which is a very neutral, non-flavorable. Hey, Paul, uh, will you throw it in, Paul, will you throw it in the side camera up close so they yeah. can see it? So that's your basic mayo. And then you can add all whatever you really want to that. So uh, you can add, uh, you know, Romanesco, pesto, whatever you want, right? You sure, can add you the paper, you can add the fresh herbs. Uh, you can turn that into a dressing as well. That's basically how you're doing uh, Caesar as well. So, uh, I think I might need to try a bite. Um, use a little more salt. And just a little more lemon, you know. You can always add. Hey, Paul, what's the difference between uh, olive oil and, I mean, uh, aioli and hollandaise? Um, well, the difference there is... Um, Hollandaise is normally uh, with uh, vinegar and tarragon, and it's uh, cooked, uh, kind of pasteurized and cooked. And the aioli is going to have your raw eggs. And the nice thing about that aioli is it's, you're kind of matching the texture of the Chardonnay. You kind of have that rich, uh, rich kind of mouth coating texture. And Absolutely. you have that nice rich Chardonnay to match that. It adds a nice richness and then it's going to really pair well with the Chardonnay. This Camelot Chardonnay is, is, is tasting really well right now, especially with this crab. So, so we got our crab cakes here 
And then I'm just going to add a little aioli. You can either, like if you had a small, that's probably a bite size, that would probably add a little bit on top, you know? I mean, you can probably do a little chives or, or chervil or tarragon or maybe like a little something that would go well with your Chardonnay. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'm gonna come so it looks like, uh, Paul, we got some questions about rice oil, um, but you could basically use any neutral oil. You know, you could use a really light olive oil with not a lot of flavor um, and then finish with some good olive oil. Or a vegetable oil. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to have Tracy come back on and uh, finish the soup up here, you guys. We have one last question that was from earlier. Um, do crab cakes reheat well? Um, if you already cook these and I were to reheat them, um, yeah, but you, you know, you're gonna, it's just, uh, you might, depending on the texture, um, you know, they'll, they'll reheat okay. Yeah, I would say okay, but. Um, I, I, would, I would say probably, probably cook them to order. Um, yeah. You know, because they only take a couple minutes to cook once you've made them, you know, and they'll last a couple of days. It's probably better just to kind of cook what you need. And uh, yeah, they'll be a little fresher. You can reheat them, it's, you know, but I would say ideally, cause they get that nice crust on it. So they're a little crispy on the outside and just really rich and flaky on the inside. So ideally, you know, just cook, cook what you need and save the rest. They'll, they'll never be the same as the fresh, <laughs> basically. So yeah, thank you guys, enjoy. All right, so while well, Tracy's getting ready, I'm gonna show you guys uh, these crabs, the stone crab. And uh, it's pretty easy. Basically, you just want to take them and put a towel or a paper towel around it. And then, you know, uh, a meat mallet or a heavy bottom pot and just give it a nice little crack. And then that basically breaks it up a little bit. And then you just pull it out and you have this beautiful meat inside here. And then what they do here in in Florida, they make a little sauce with it, and I think they just call it cocktail sauce um, or crab sauce, but it's basically, I bought some tonight with it, um, but it's basically mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, a little bit of Worcestershire, and the secret ingredient is A1 sauce. They put a little A1 sauce in there to give it a little rich sort of umami flavor, but then you just feel it and then eat it. So super simple. And while I was over there shopping, I also found some beautiful king crab legs that were on sale at the restaurant. And the thing here is, you know, this is what you're seeing on those TV shows when they're catching Alaskan crab. And I don't know if Paul showed you this earlier. When we clean crab in the kitchen, we use scissors. The, the kind we like is called Joyce Chen scissors. But then you just start at one end of the crab and you just cut it and it makes it super easy. And if you're going to a crab feed, you know, definitely bring your scissors because you're going to win. You're going to eat the most crab because it's so much easier than cracking it. So that's the real Alaskan crab legs there. So um, kind of fun, but you know, every, every, everybody has their crab. Everybody has their region. If you're in Maryland, you're eating blue crabs steamed in Old Bay and you drink some ice cold Budweiser and uh, sit around and pick the crabs and you know different times in, in the Carolinas you have the soft shell crab where they're molting and they they get them and you deep fry them and um, you know we have our dungeness there so it depends on where you live everybody's got good crab and you know Chardonnay goes well with it so it's always fun to uh, enjoy crabs and the, the different spots I, I got to have some of the when they called a hairy crab when I was in China. And that was pretty amazing. So, you know, wherever you are, if it's the season, make sure you're checking out the good stuff and uh, drink a good wine with it. So to you, Tracy, cheers. Cheers. Looks like we have a question. I just can't see it. Was that a question, Jessica, before I get going? Yeah, we have a few questions. So at what temperature did you roast the crab is one of them. When we were making the stock? When you were making the, the crab. The crab stock they got roasted at like a like a, in a three fifty. The bones get roasted in a three hundred and fifty degree oven. But when but we cooked the crab in boiling water. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Was that the only question? Yes, that's it. 
All right, so my soup's been simmering now. And um, as you can see, I'm gonna hold it up to this camera over here. You'll be, I'm gonna go to this camera. You'll be able to see that it has turned nearly, the cauliflower is nearly to mush, which is what we want. You can see. So at this point, I remove the bay leaf. That's an important one to remember. Remove the bay leaf. You don't want to blend the bay leaf into the soup. And then I put soup in my blender, but notice that I'm barely halfway full on my blender because I have hot soup here. So be really cautious when blending hot um, anything in your blender. You do not want to fill it up all the way. It will kind of explode on you. So I went just barely halfway and now I'm going to blend. So it's going to be loud for a quick second. Before I turn the blender on, I also have a towel, a kitchen towel, and I'm going to put my hand on top of the lid. This is just extra protection. So the pressure that's kind of being built up in here from that heat that I'm going to hold the lid on. So I'm keeping my blender on low and serve this, I'm going to taste it. Like you want to do with anything, you want to make sure it's got the um, the flavor that you want. So right now what I'm tasting for is salt and acidity, because right now I can adjust that. I can add more seasoning if I want. I can add some fresh lemon juice to brighten it up. I need a tad bit of salt. The other thing I'm checking for here is texture, because that's part of the point of this soup is this beautiful velvety rich texture. So I want to make sure that I blended it enough to, um, to ensure that texture. So I've got this really nice, beautiful soup and I'm going to now assemble the bowl. So I've got those florets. I'm gonna go on this side view here. I think you might be able to see it a little bit better that way. Tracy, we have a question. Can we use the immersion blender in the pot? Yeah, you can, you can. Um, sometimes the immersion blender doesn't get it quite as smooth, but if you can get it as smooth with your immersion blender, yeah, absolutely. Um, so in my, I like to chew the bowl that's a darker color because then you get this kind of really nice contrast of this white soup and the white broccoli florets and the you know bright color of the crab. So I'm gonna take, I mean, sorry, the cauliflower florets. So I'm gonna take some of those florets and just put them, you can you know just put them all over the bowl. So when you pour your soup over them, not only it'll warm up the, the florets. And then I've got my fresh crab meat with some lemon zest and a dash of fresh lemon juice. And that just, again, I'm just brightening up. We've got this beautiful, sweet, fresh crab. Again, it's gonna be one more element of texture and just decadence in the bowl. So um, you can, if you want the crab to be warm, you could put it in the bowl right now. I like to have it on top so you can see it. So you can pour your soup directly into your bowl right over your florets. Okay, nice. And then I'm just gonna add my crab salad directly on top of that. Because if I'm serving fresh crab, I want people to see it. If I hide it with the soup, then you won't see it. You'll know it's there once you eat it. And then, and then it's also nice to um, to finish. I like some fresh herbs. So the 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 softer herbs are what I would like here. So think tarragon, sherbet, dill. So I have this beautiful fresh dill that I'm just gonna put right on top. Tracy, will you hit the other camera? It might be easier. Uh, up a little. Perfect, beautiful. Yeah. We, we've been making those, this. I have all this straight so you can, if I do this, you can kind of see into the bowl, but see how nice that looks, the contrast of this really kind of dark bowl with this beautiful kind of bright white of the soup. It's really nice and decadent. And we've been making this soup for about 17 years now. And this is one of Jess Jackson's favorite soups. He loved this with Chardonnay. It never gets old. This really doesn't. And like I said, it's really quite simple ingredients. Um, you know, the crab obviously is a little bit more of an expensive ingredient, but if you're already buying crab for something else, like I said, it's way less crab meat on top. You could have this even without the fresh crab meat. And it's still really delicious flavor using the bones or the shells from your crab to make a stock and a really nice soup, so. Tracy, uh, we had a question. Would you serve any oil on top when serving it? Sure, you could if you wanted to drizzle with a little bit of like lemon oil would be nice or really like high end olive oil. Sure, I don't think that that would hurt it at all. Even a little sprinkle of malt and salt on top wouldn't be a bad thing. Any other questions? No? I got a question. Trace. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
So y'all have been doing uh, some I'm meals. Sorry, you asked me, do we miss you? What's that? Do we miss you? Is that your question? No. Do of we course, miss you? Uh, of course we miss you, Justin. Of course you do. No, I was uh, I was asking about these meals. Y- y'all been doing meals to go twice a week for the wine club and and uh, boys. Yeah, thank you for asking. We were going to mention that. Um, so yeah, so um, since we are unable to host people at the estate right now, we've been doing meals to go. So um, this is available for wine club um, locally, and we're doing meals on Wednesdays and Fridays. It's fifty dollars for a meal for two, and um, I'm just going to pat us all on the back right now because we've been making some really, really delicious food, some good, comforting food. So um, like earlier this week, we made gumbo. Tomorrow, we've got some beautiful Italian braised pork and creamy polenta, but it's a full meal. So like, for example, tomorrow's meal is Italian braised pork, polenta, charred broccoli with lemon, um, a radicchio and um, dandelion green Caesar salad, chocolate pot de creme, and homemade focaccia. So it's a complete meal. Anything you could ever want in the meal is there and it's $50 for two people. So quite honestly, it's the steal of the century. And we're using vegetables from the garden when they're available. Um, you know, it's it's all of us cooking the food. So it's, you know, it's all the chefs that are making all this great food. And we're bringing a lot of our, um, our heritage, like I'm Italian, as you all know at this point, because I talk so much with my hands, but you know, that was what inspired tomorrow's meal. Earlier this week when we did gumbo, we used a recipe that Justin developed based on his Southern roots. Paul made some really awesome chicken pot pie earlier in the month. So we've been really um, wanting to make food that is not only delicious that we want to share with you, but really comforting meals that people would want to eat right now. So yeah, if you're interested in um, in any of those meals, if you're part of the wine club, you're automatically, you've already received the email. We are gonna be continuing doing the meals through February. Um, so the only exception is February is the weekend that we're doing the crab meal. That will not be $50 a person, but that would be our meal that Friday on the 5th and the 6th. So that's why you can pick up on February 5th and February 6th. And then we're gonna be doing some cool things the following week when it's February 12th, the weekend before Valentine's Day. We're gonna be doing a a meal, but then we're gonna be having some special add-ons for additional prices. So you're gonna have the opportunity to purchase some of Buttercup's homemade chocolate truffles. And then there's also gonna be an opportunity to add on um, truffle mac and cheese. So lots of great things coming. We're having a really good time doing this. If you have any questions about it, the best thing to do is call the Kendall Jackson Wine Center and speak with Angela or Matt, they can help you out with any details. Because like I said, right now, it's not actually open to the public. So it's really just an exclusive thing for wine club and kind of internally friends and family. So there's no real access to it online right now, unless you have the special, the secret link. Hey, Tracy, um, Kelly and I'll be there around 1.30 tomorrow. If you could just save a couple crab cakes. She just walked in, but. Uh, maybe a little gumbo and crab cakes about 145 would be perfect. So. <laughs> crab cakes, yes. Gumbo, gumbo sold on. Gumbo sold out. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, though. <laughs> well, hey, thank you. I miss you guys. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and get back in the kitchen. And uh, great job tonight with the crab. And uh, you're making me hungry. Unfortunately, I can't have Dungeness tonight, so I'm just going to have to have stone crab and a little uh, Santa Maria Chardonnay. So I'm going to make do, but tomorrow I'll be there happy to have crab cakes. Well, I just want to make sure that there's no more questions out there or comments, and I want to let you all know we are, again, so grateful um, that you've taken the time to join us. I know we have a lot of repeat customers that join us, and we're going to be continuing with this. We're, um, our next Zoom will be the third Thursday in February. Um, and that one, we're going to be talking about mushrooms. So I know Justin was asking Paul about mushrooms earlier. Um, and this next one in uh, February is going to be all about mushrooms. So we're going to be focusing on where I think we're going to be making a mushroom risotto and we're going to be making a sun choke and mushroom soup. So lots of great things to look forward to next month. And, um, and again, don't forget about the crab dinner and you can contact us with any questions. If anybody cooked any of the food tonight from the recipes, Send them in to Jessica. We'd love to see the pictures. Hey, hey Tracy, can I request two classes? I would Excuse like me? to see. I would like to see a Lord of Rice rice cooking class. 
You know, I think rice is a hard thing to cook and we could cook some different styles. And, you know, you have the Lord of rice standing right behind you. So I think we should utilize that. And then I was also thinking, because I've been crushing my Instapot this whole time I've been gone, I think we need an Instapot cooking class. So oh, I'm sure. I'm work on that. that would be wonderful. I use my Instapot all the time as well. So I, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I know that we had some requests, like risotto was one of the requests that someone had asked for. We had had a few people ask about squash. So I believe in March, the class is going to be all about squash. Um, so yeah, lots of, and if anyone else has any requests, put them in the chat box. We'd love to hear what the requests are. And if it's something that we can make work during the class, we'll definitely make it happen. Tracy, are you sure you can't ship to Arizona? Oh, I wish. I wish we could. We could ship wine, I believe, to Arizona. Oh, oh yeah. No, we, we're, 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 we're members. Right? We're members. We get it all the time. <laughs> I wish we could ship your crab dinner to Arizona, but not this time. You'll have to, next time, you'll just have to come join us. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much. Were there any more questions out there that I missed? I, there, there's a lot of chat coming up, so I'm missing it. I'm missing it. So Jessica, hopefully you were catching. Yeah, I think we got all the questions. Everybody's excited for the Instapot class in the future. So. Okay. And Arancini, they want, uh, Trace, they want some Arancini. Uh, we're going to do that next month when we talk about risotto. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you all again for joining us. Thank you, Paul, for talking about all your crabs. Cheers to everybody. Have a great Thursday evening. Drink lots of wine. See you Cheers. next time. Thank you. Thank you.